What is up everybody, it is Og here, back with another video, and in today's video, we are going to be going from 58 to 60 in ZG, getting absolutely insane XP, as you can see it flying off the screen right now at about 1300 a kill. This can cap out at as high as like 650,000 experience per hour that I got with two bars of rest, and so I got six bars that run, and so that would be about 400 to 450,000 experience per hour that we can really cap out at, but I'm going to say about 300,000 experience per hour on average. We're going to dive through specifically how to do the pool. I'm really going to break it down, go through individual kind of like integrate intricate kind of aspects of it and then after that we're going to go through the gear and talents and then we're going to have an actual full run through a 58 uninterrupted for anyone who just wants to follow along as they go through the runs trying to focus on kind of like their runs themselves so we are going to have timestamps for those down in the description down below if you'd like to see any of this live on twitch check out my twitch link down below and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this okay so we're going to start off with my level 59 run so this was the last run that we did to get level 60. Now, the reason why I'm starting off with this run and not my 58 run is that I made minor improvements along the way, and I want to be able to pause this video and actually work through those minor improvements to make sure that you guys have the best possible run that you could be doing. Now, that being said, I will have the level 58 run after this video where you can just watch it all the way through. We'll have some music, and it's just going to be uninterrupted, so you can just follow along if you want to follow along. So that being said, we're going to come over into the right side. We're going to go in through the water. And so if you're level 58, you're actually able to sneak through the water, swimming down to the bottom and not aggro these pats up on the left or these mobs up on the left here. So what you do is you jump out of the water, swim down to the bottom, and then hug around the side, jump up to the mountain, jump down and start making your way to the reset spot. Now it's very important that you get started quickly because the berserker has a specific patting that you want to be able to maximize and it only works perfectly every single time when you come into the instance the first time. So you want to get actually over to the spot where we're going to be pulling around the berserker quickly. And so what we do here, we go up to the top of the mountain, we're going to jump off, there's some pats over here which you could potentially aggro, don't worry about them, they're not going to kill you, just make sure that you're mounted. There's also axe thrower pats that are patting back here over in the corner and walking down, but as long as you go there quickly, you won't even need to worry about that when you come in this instance around this side. So we're going to get over to the reset spot. Now the reset spot is this first kind of, I don't know, tree ranch, whatever you want to call it, right here. And this is actually a reset spot. What you notice that I did though was I jumped past it and then jump back on it. That is going to help reset the mobs quicker. So make sure that when you're coming over this, you jump over the branch, the root, we'll call it a root, jump over the root and jump back onto it on the other side, and that is really gonna help you to be able to reset the mobs quicker. But now we can see that the Berserker is on his way back, and so this is always gonna be the case. He might be over here, but he's always gonna be on the way back, which means you're only gonna need to wait about 15 seconds to get your pool started. As soon as he crosses over pretty much past this fern that you see right here, you're able to start the pool. And so we're gonna work our way around the side of this tree, get to the other part of it, and so what you do is you can jump up on the top of the tree and jump over, or you can you know, shimmy your way up that route, practice it a little bit, you'll be able to get it easily. Get full shields, get full mana, and go ahead and jump off. Now, what you want to be doing is you want to be jumping off behind here, you're automatically going to aggro the crocs, but then you want to run behind the fern and jump constantly. Now this jumping is going to help you to avoid taking too much damage by running up and scaling this mountain. You'll see that I did drop to 139, but overall 139 isn't too bad as long as you still have your shields you're doing pretty well even if you lose your shields though as long as you don't get dazed you're gonna be okay now the other thing that you want to do is as soon as you get past those crocs you want to start hugging the inside near the water now the reason you want to hug the water is that we're going to need to turn back around and avoid the crocs that we just aggroed on the way back up kind of this, this hill over here so by hugging the inside the crocs are going to have the most inner pathing to allow us to work our way around them so here we hug the inside, we go and just aggro these crocs with the face pull, but now you can see that the crocs down here are closer to the water because we hug the water, allowing us to escape along the outside perimeter up here without taking any damage. Now sometimes I've done this with full shields, sometimes I've had no shields at all. Have as much shields as you can, obviously, but we'll make it work. Up here you want to slow down just a little bit, wait to make sure that the crocs are kind of aggregated and a little bit close if you don't wait too long enough you could potentially aggro this group in the corner but you probably won't hug the inner wall and as long as you're 58 being pretty close to this inner wall you're not going to pull the group that's right behind us right now when you come into this crop uh, tiger room what you want to do is you want to pull that tiger at max range like that 
and then work your way over to the corner and pull that tiger max range and come over into this corner and kind of zigzag over to get to this waterfall. If you pull those tigers just like that, so I'll show that again. If you pull these tigers where you're max ranging this mob and you're going to kind of pull like right around here and then you go in and immediately jut out, you're not going to take any damage from these tigers, but you're going to be able to aggro every single one, which is going to maximize the XP that you get while at the same time not losing tigers. You're going to jump off and you're going to slow fall into the water. Don't blink typically. Now, if you are low health and you're worried about getting hit by one of these fish, go ahead and blink, but typically you won't need to blink there. What you want to do is you want to immediately get up to this high point on this kind of mountain right here. You still have your slow fall from the most recent jump. You jump into the water. As soon as you get into the water, you blink, aggro this crocodile scoop on the right. Sometimes he's or on the left. Sometimes he's going to auto aggro. Otherwise, just aggro him. Run over through these crocs and Nova. And now you want to run up against this wall right here, hugging the wall to make sure that you don't fall into the water. Now, what you also noticed is that as I came across here with this croc, I did jump turn Kona cold him. So we want to be as quick as possible so that the tigers that are over here are not caught up to us because we're going to be on our feet. We don't have a mount to go quickly like we do when we're on 60 with Epic Mount and things like that, making it a lot easier. It's a lot more difficult for timing purposes when you're a lower level. And so we want to make sure that we have the maximum distance. Those tigers will catch up. Don't even worry about them. But as soon as you pull this croc, he's going to get to us pretty quickly. So we need to jump, turn, Kona cold. And so what you're going to see is that within the first few seconds, I'm running this way, I jump, turn, Kona cold, and slow that croc. The other option is just to wait until he gets into these kind of crocs right here and jump Nova to Nova all of those crocs along with that croc that's behind you. Jumping while nova is going to extend the leeway range, allowing you to hit more mobs with that Nova. So that's why we would jump. Come around the bend here, and what you actually want to do is you want to make sure that you run up this route. Even if you fall into the water, run up the route. What's going to happen is that when you run up the route, the mobs actually, for whatever reason, will also try to run up the route and then come back down. This gives you an extra about two seconds gap. Now, I unfortunately did not run up the route there. I failed, and so the mobs catch up pretty closely. But if you were to run up the route, they would kind of shimmy backwards, and then you'll have a little bit more distance on the mobs. You're going to then go bolting straight. Now, as, as a level 60, with Epic Mount, we want to wait up on this hill a little bit over here to make sure that the mobs can catch up to us so we don't pull the Berserker around the Hakar Temple. However, when we're a lower level, we don't need to worry about that because these mobs are going to be pretty close to us already since we're not on our mount running around the side of the Hakar Temple. And so we could just bolt straight to the next mobs. You want to hug the left side so you take as little damage as possible, Nova these crocs, and then jump into the water and blink across. Make sure that you jump into the water as much as you can, kind of like a swimmer or something. You want to get as far into the water with your jump and then blink, allowing you to get through the water quickly so you don't get dazed. Jump off of here. It's okay if you get hit by a mob. Get your full barrier up. Get your full mana shield up and then aggro this croc. And I like to blink into the crocs from there. Nova, keep on running forward. Reapply with cold snap. And now here's very important how we're going to aggro all these mobs. We are going to cold snap. We're going to ice barrier. We're going to counterspell this croc, which is off a of GCD, and we're going to lip right around here. What's going to happen is that the mobs on the left are going to catch up to us, the mobs on the right are going to catch up to us, and the mobs that are frozen are going to be lagging behind a little bit, but typically you freeze them a little bit earlier, so then they aren't lagging behind. But at the end of the lip, that allows us with the cold snap to go ahead and freeze them all again as we run away. So lip, we're waiting. I have after about one second left on the lip, we're going to move to left, Nova, and it Nova's pretty much all the mobs. Now, one of them might get through, two of them might get through, whatever, that's fine. You could jump turn, go to cold them. You can just leave on frost armor to get them. That's perfectly fine. Now, the other thing that we notice is that these serpents up here are actually on the side. So it's the Sun of Car and the Soul Flares. And so in order to avoid them, what I like to do is just blink through the water, come over to the side, and then we're good to go. And you'll see that I Nova that croc there just to make sure that he gets back into the normal path. At this point, we can swap back over to our mage armor and get ready for a kill phase. You can see that I don't need a ton of mana, so I'm at 20% mana. We're going to be regening a lot of mana as you go through here, and so we want to just focus on kind of getting to the spots, and we'll just work on the kill phase and getting through it with rank 1 blizzards. If we get through it with rank 1 blizzards, it's perfectly fine. What you want to do is you actually want to come, and there's a specific spot on this rope that you want to come jump up to. Now, if you need to blink here, if the mobs are too close, blink. Don't risk the mobs taking too long to get to the rope because they could bug out and kind of follow you up the rope. 
If they do follow you up the rope, just kind of shimmy back on top of the rope. Just walk backwards or sideways or something, trying to get them to reset. But if necessary, you might have to jump back into the water and reset back around the side, knowing them and getting right back up to the spot. But the rope that you're aiming for is right here. So it's the second rope right after the gap in the middle. This second rope right after the gap in the middle works pretty much perfectly for me and never causes issues. So what we do is we run up against it and jump up. Now you can see the tigers are coming and the crocs are coming from us from this side. Swap back over, we rank one blizzard. We're trying to group these mobs up as quickly as possible. Now typically I would go for another rank one blizzard just to kind of stack them. So basically within these groups, I did get a clear casting proc, that's why I didn't. Within these groups, there are cubs. Now these cubs will run away from you if they are not continuously blizzard. So you gotta be really quick with the blizzard and you wanna burn them down quick so that when they do start running away from you, they're dying quickly after that. So what I like to do actually is I like to focus on rank one blizzards to allow the groups to stack up. So how do we do that? We focus on blizzarding the front mobs and you'll see that we occasionally have some runners like that who actually are out of the range. So right here, these two mobs right here because we place a blizzard at the front of the pack, are behind the pack enough where they're not getting hit by blizzard, but what they're going to do is run to the front of the pack and get hit by blizzard. That's gonna condense the pack even more, so we have a better opportunity to do as much damage as possible with our max rank blizzard. So that's why I like to start off kind of with rank one blizzards, just trying to group them as much as possible, focus on the front mobs, stack them up, and then we can focus on max rank blizzard. So here we're getting them stacked up. When you're using rank one blizzard, you don't worry about making sure that you do max blizzard the entire time, right? Because the the blizzard is not going to do a ton of damage. It's not costing you a ton of mana. You're just using it to stack the mobs. And so if, you know, all the mobs are grouped and they have two seconds left on it, jump back up and start doing another blizzard because you just want to make sure that you keep the debuff on them at all times. Here you can see the debuff is going to run off some of the mobs. They run forward. And so we're just trying to condense them as much as possible. Once we feel like they're condensed, we're going to go into max rank blizzard. And so max rank blizzard, we're trying to burn down the cubs as quickly as possible. Now max rank blizzard, you pretty much want to go the full duration. However, because we didn't get off the next blizzard quick enough because we messed up the jump, you're going to see that the cubs did sneak through. So this is what we're worried about. We want to make sure that we're burning down the cubs so that this does not happen. If it does, they're going to try to run to the mobs behind us. We need to jump up onto the rope. We need to Nova them, and then we need to kill them. Depending on their positioning, you can kill them with a cone of cold, or you can kill them with arcane explosion, something like that. As soon as the cubs are dead, though, things get a lot easier. We could just focus on getting down the crocs and making sure that we keep them in a good position. You can see that we have a really good stack here. So I'm just going to focus on max rank blizzarding and letting the max rank blizzards go all the way through just because we do have so many of them. And so burning them down, we're watching our mana. You're going to notice that I also did evocate earlier. Now, when you go for an evocate, I want to focus on that just for a second. What you want to make sure that you do is you actually want to make sure that you slow the mobs coming towards you before you go for the evocate. This is going to allow you to have the maximum distance when you actually do go for that evocate. If you try to evocate while those mobs are already running back around, they might hit you. So you want to make sure that you slow the mobs all the way coming towards you. Make sure they have four seconds of blizzard on the front mobs. Jump back up to the rope. This is going to cause them to have a long time to get all the way back around. Go for that evocate. Once evocate's done, jump right back down and get right back into killing them. Make sure that you do that, though, so that they aren't potentially getting to the water, aggroing fish, or just hitting you from below, or things like that. But once we're back into the normal rotation, we're just burning them down. If you get clear casting procs, use max rank. Otherwise, try to group them up. Once they're grouped up, you can swap over to max rank. When you're level 58 to 60, highly recommend having some pots, major mana pots. You know, while they may cost three gold, you're going to make about, about 30 to 40 gold a run every, like, nine minutes. Burn mana, or burn money on the pots. It's going to save you in the long ter term. It's going to make the rounds quicker. It's going to make sure that you actually get down the mob so you're not just sitting there twiddling your thumbs with the rank one blizzard back and forth, back and forth, hoping for a clear casting proc. Buy the major mana pots. Burn them. 100% worth it. But you're just jumping back and forth. You're trying to keep up the blizzard ticks at full strength. You can see that we have a front runner here. So we're going to swap over to a rank one blizzard just to try to get the front runner to go back into the mobs and kind of, kind of get restacked. We still have our mana gem, so we're going to pop our mana gem. He did run fully through it here, so be careful because he could potentially go ahead and hit us there. But we're actually going to cut this blizzard short because we saw that he got slowed at the back end and we have a clear cast. And we want to make sure the clear cast goes off. And so then we jump back down. 
but you just really just go back and forth trying to AoE burn down these mobs as much as possible. Be conservative with your mana. At the end of the day, I have about 5,400 mana unbuffed, and I'm going to be going through my gear in a little bit, and we're just going to be focusing on some of that and some of the requirements per se. But as long as you appropriately work through your rank 1 blizzard, so you're maximizing the opportunity of your max rank blizzards to burn down these mobs, you don't need a ton of mana, and you're going to be good to go. Here I did take a risk, though, and you see that I blizzard at the top of this ramp. I wasn't able to get off the full rank blizzard, and so it did cost me a good amount of mana. But then I hopped back down and went back into another max rank blizzard. We got most of the mobs down, but now you're going to see that I'm out of pots, and I am out of mana. And so now we have to rank 1 blizzard for quite some time to get through the rest of the mobs. So you just want to be very mana conservative. You want to be very smart. If you have the Mage ST quest, so there's Mage class quest at level 50 that was added with, I think it was Zolgurub, question mark, maybe Dire Maul, that basically is a catch-up quest. And it allows you to get what's called a Fire Ruby. And so Fire Ruby is mainly designed for the fire spec, like a fire build. However, what it does is it restores zero or 1 to 500 mana. So if it restores 500 mana, it's awesome. It's usable every three minutes. So it's basically another little mana gem. It's not going to give you as much as, you know, your mana rubies or your other mana gems or things like that, but it is going to give you a good amount of mana that you can just use to burn any time that you need to get your mana back up to be able to get down the kills. But here you can see that we're getting down the mobs. We have almost all of them down. We're just working on the last little rank one blizzards. I didn't reset my timer for my session perfectly, and so the XP per hour is a little bit lower, but we're going to see with the level 58 run through when we reset the session at the start of the instance that it was coming through at about 300,000. We capped out with a pretty perfect run at the beginning of 59 at about 650,000 experience per hour with two bars being rested, and we normally get about five bars per run. So that run, we got about six bars of that run, and it was about 600,000 experience per hour. You can average 58 to 60 in about one hour and 30 minutes. It's absolutely incredible. One last thing that I do want to focus on is how to actually do the jumps back and forth on this bridge, because a lot of people do struggle some with doing that jump. Now, if you are a male, this is more easy. Okay, what you're going to be doing is that once we have that perfect positioning on this branch right here, all we do is that when we jump off the branch, we strafe off and then we strafe back into the rope. And so you're gonna see that I kind of go back into the rope. This is just to provide positioning for the next jump up. You then jump up and immediately strafe over. Do not do jump and strafe at the same time. Jump first, then strafe left immediately. And that will get you back up. Now, if you are a female, what you actually have to do a lot of the times, you could try to do this, and sometimes having the noggin fogger or the skeleton will help and things like that, and maybe elixir giant growth that will help with this if you want to do this jump. Alternatively, what you need to do is you need to stand on this middle kind of bridge point right here, right in between the two ropes, and then you strafe jump up to get to the side of here. And so you stand here, you strafe jump up, strafe up, and just jump back down, go into your blizzards. Strafe jump up go back down your blizzards. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So after we did that run, we actually did go through a demonstration of how to do the jump as a female. So what you want to do is you go over to that middle kind of branch right there or middle point of the rope. You aim 50 degrees to the right and you just strafe jump back and forth just like that. So just to show that one more time, we come over to the middle of the bridge. We go right on this middle part right here. We turn 50 ish degrees to the right. And now we're just strafe jumping. So strafe and jump at the same time, jump up to the rope, run down, strafe up and jump at the same time, run down. Sometimes if you get dazed during your run, your RP walk is also going to be bugged. So make sure you have RP walk on when you're just doing the normal jump up towards the side. If it is bugged though, and you're running really, really slow, this can happen sometimes when you get dazed. What you need to do is actually this jump right here because your daze is going to be so slow that RP will jump is going to get messed up every single time. So you are going to need to do the strafe jump strat. Don't have RP walk on when you're doing that, of course, but you can do that and that will still work and you'll be able to get the kills like that. So let's talk about some gear and talent. So as far as gear goes, have as much in and stam as you can, basically. I didn't have good gear at all, as you're about to see. And so it can be pulled off with pretty much any gear as possible. But here's some recommendations of things you can get. Of the eagle gear, definitely going to be great. 
go ahead and grab T.5. So that's going to be Magisters, Devout, Dreadmist, Necropile, if you can get it out of Scalo, things like that that are going to give you just some really good int and stam. And so here we have the Magisters gloves. Those are great. But then we also have the Dreadmist belt and the Dreadmist bracers. The two set bonus is plus 200 armor. So if you can get 200 armor, that's actually really helpful when you're running through, running by the Crocs, hopefully not getting hit as hard. From there, though, pretty much just int and stam you need to have minor run speed on boots that's going to be imperative make sure that you have that if you can also have the extra run speed on the gloves as well for mounted speed highly recommend that as well that will definitely help with your runs band of the hair fence great to get just of intellect ring uther strength is actually really nice to have so it's basically 20 stamina every single time that it's popped so it's a 200 health barrier highly recommend getting this this is a great trinket very cheap just to have of the eagle I have the illusionary rod out of SM. <laughs> like, you don't need crazy things. Robes of the Insight are actually really useful as well. Robes of the Insight will decrease the mana cost of your next Blizzard by up to 500 mana, which is very, very nice to help you out with some mana when you're going through just kind of like a kill phase. Of the Eagle Gear, Elder Wizard's Mantle, Horizon Choker, White Man Chapeau out of SM. You don't need great gear, basically, is the moral of the story to be able to do this. As far as specs go, here is the spec that I am using. This is Talented Classic, the add-on, and I will link this down in the description below for the exact spec. This is at 59. The only difference of 59 is one less point in a wand specialization. I did go into wand specialization just to be able to kill the mobs at the end, should I be out of mana, just to do some extra damage, things like that, because there's nowhere else that we really need them. Maybe improve Frostbolt, but we don't really need improve Frostbolt because we're going to be oom if we're using our wand anyways. So that's something you can use. But the important things are to get clear casting, and then to go all the way through the frost tree, skipping, of course, over frostbite and winter's chill and potentially frostbolt, depending on how you want to do this build. So again, that'll be linked down below. But now let's go ahead and jump into the full 58 run on our mage where we did it the very first time through us 58, put on some music and hang out and you guys can watch it all in full time if you want to follow along.
get lost inside my thoughts and when I start to think Oh, the time, how close it starts to end up on the brink I tried so hard but all these scars, they cut so deep I bleed I fell so fast from heaven, it's like someone clipped my wings Now I'm falling and I can't see the ground can we stop this gravity it keeps bringing me down i can't breathe and i don't want to die can we stop this gravity cause i don't want to say goodbye <laughs> everyone that wraps up today's video i hope you all enjoyed it and if you did please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so and if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos please let me know in the comments below also check out the description for the twitch where i do all this live and also for my twitter and discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when i'm going to go live on stream so i'll see you guys in the next video